I'm excited to have with me today Felipe Massetti Lett. He's a world renowned long writer, award winning journalist, filmmaker, best selling author, and he's here today to talk about his recent documentary, The Long Rider. Welcome, Felipe. Thank you so much for having me and allowing me to share, share my story. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I am talking to you and I just saw the film and I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, how did you do it? Like <laughs> it is. But I want to start off by for people who may not know, what is a long rider? What is a long rider? Yeah, for sure. A lot of people have no idea, right? It's a subculture. Uh, a long rider is someone who rides uh, a thousand miles or more consecutively in a single journey. So um, as you saw in the film that I mentioned, some famous long riders of the past, um, Charles Darwin, Marco Polo, uh, Aim Chifley, who inspired my journey. And to this day, there's still uh, lots of people around the world jumping into the saddle and going on their own equestrian uh, journeys. Yeah, so this is your dream since you were a child and I understand your father would read the book by M.A. Um, Tchaikovsky. Chiefly. Chiefly, sorry. And but it, it all began with, with that book, which was 1925, yeah. I understand, was published, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's insane, right? To think that uh, I know a story that happened uh, almost a century ago could have inspired someone to uh, to try to emulate it. You know, so many years later, and uh, yeah, my dad used to read me that book every night before I went to sleep. It's called Chifley's Ride. It tells the story of uh, one of the most epic long rides of all time. Aim Chifley uh, rode horseback from Argentina to New York in 1925, and I just fell in love with the story. It became my life's dream to one day uh, go on my own long ride. Wow. I mean, was there a pivotal moment you said, I want to become a long rider? I mean, were you, where were you and, and what did it feel like? So I think it was very gradual. Like at first it was just kind of like a kid's dream. You know, I'd be at the farm and my little horse thinking I was the guy traveling across the Americas. And then as I got older, it started to, you know, grow. And I thought about it and thought about it and pondered and wondered if it, it'd be possible to do this in the 21st century. And uh, one day I was in my last year of university at uh, Ryerson in Toronto. And I just, um, I, I went on the internet and started researching and I saw, I found the Long Riders Guild, which is an organization that, you know, puts all these stories together and helps people that want to go on their own journeys. Um, and I got in touch with them and, and they were very helpful with me. And I, I learned that there was people all over the world still going on long rides. And, and that kind of gave me uh, the push that I needed to actually, you know, grab the dream and turn it into a project. Uh, the first thing I did was write it down and, and created a war room in my apartment where I lived and, and started the planning stage, very arduous as well, until I acquired all the know-how and the equipment, the horses and the money that I needed to undertake this journey. Wow, I mean, a lot of uh, preparation and, and it just is so much. So tell us about the process. I mean, um, you know, there was a saddle, they're packing and then I understand there was no water. You forgot to bring water, right? What is that? I mean, yeah, this, it's, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, it, it's so much to you know to to do, and uh, I had to I'd do everything. Like, I had to literally learn how to ride a horse long distance. I I was comfortable around horses, but it's totally different for you to you know rope with a horse or compete and then ride it for eight ten hours every day. Um, and so I had to speak to long riders around the world and, and read as much literature as I could find. Uh, the other part of it was getting my body into shape, um, losing weight, working on my core, uh, drawing my route, figuring out you know what countries I was going to cross, what the you know what the geography was like, social economic. Um, you know everything that was happening in these countries at the time I had to really uh, learn and focus and and then the other part was acquiring everything I needed like I said from the horses to the tent to to the I didn't have a single horseshoe so that was the the hardest part I think was convincing people uh, to support me and that I'd, I'd actually be able to do this uh, you know in my early 20s but uh, luckily I got everything I needed and then on that first day I, in 2012 I managed to ride right out of the Calgary Stampede. Yes, I mean, there's a, I mean, sitting on a horse is one thing, and but being on such long hours, so it would be like 30 kilometers a day you would do, like, 
Yeah, exactly. That's how much you travel a day. You know, it's a, it's a good number for the animal and for the rider as well. And uh, that would take about eight to 10 hours to, to do those 30 kilometers. Oh my goodness. And then, you know, with the, there, you know, moments of bonding with the horses like Brucer um, and Frenchie. And I mean, for people who are watching and like, how, how did you bond so well with the horses? Like you became like a family, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, they become your kids. They're like yeah. your children. Yeah, an extension of your body, and and there's yours. And that's one of the most uh, special parts of the trip. You know, is actually uh, creating this bond with, with the animals. And it happens because um, you spend so much time around them. You know, it's uh, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. You're eating next to them. You're traveling with them. You're sleeping around them. Um, you know, usually when you have a horse nowadays, you you leave the horse out in the pasture. or or in a stall and you sleep in your bedroom, you know, you know, you're not having this constant connection with the animal. Um, and, and so, yeah, I was, I was a part of the herd and, and they were a part of my, I, I heard yeah. and, and it was such a beautiful, go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, so what drove you, like, I mean, what lessons did you learn? And, and, you know, like, I know I'm asking two questions here, but you're on this journey, incredible journey. And did you feel a bit of loneliness? Like, how did you mentally be so strong? Yeah, it's tough. You know, I think, I think uh, it helps when you prepare. Like I said, strategic planning um, really helps to, to prepare you both uh, mentally and physically. Uh, the mental aspect of it was definitely by far the hardest. Uh, you got to push. You know, there's moments where you think you're not going to be able to do it. And uh, you just have to continue on. Like, you, you touched upon the loneliness. Um, that's very hard. You know, I, I always say some of the deepest scars I have in my soul came from all the time I spent alone by myself suffering, uh, you know, in the middle of nowhere and, and that stuff that you can't take back. But, um, you know, ultimately it was a huge learning experience. I think that we, as humans, we learn the biggest lessons in our lives when things aren't going well, right? I think when things are going well, they're great to, to motivate us to continue on. But uh, the true lessons come from our mistakes, from from when we hit rock bottom. And and I learned so many lessons from this journey, you know, from the the kindness of humanity to the power of the horse to the to the power of the human spirit when you when you set a goal and are able to focus and and make it happen um you know so i think ultimately i came out of it a much stronger person yeah so no, congratulations and you're also i didn't put in the intro but you're also the youngest long rider to cross the americas and you speak several languages yeah. like spanish um english of course french, french. Do you, and you know having Portuguese in Portuguese like all those languages like do you think the film will be in other languages like that you uh yeah I love languages you know and it, it's uh it, it was one of the reasons why I was able to um take so much away from this journey you know had I not been able to communicate with the people that were hosting me every 30 kilometers through those 12 nations um it wouldn't have been you know as special as it was that was the the best part was that connection with with uh, with people at the end of every day. You know, you, you really learn how kind humanity is at its core. And and um, yeah, I'd love to learn new languages. I lo I'd love to I'd love to learn French that you just mentioned. Um, and uh, in Italian, you know, I, I love communicating with people. So for sure. Well, three languages is, is just awesome. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So tell us some of the highlights of, of your journey. Yeah, so I think the highlights were uh, leaving the Calgary Stampede. Like, I fought so hard to take that first step, you know, like two years earlier, I was just a crazy kid with a dream that was never going to even leave. So to be there with those animals that were given to me, the saddle, the back saddle, leaving from the Centennial Stampede uh, was so special, starting that dream. Um, Yellowstone National Park, crossing the backcountry of Yellowstone was, was epic, uh, so beautiful. Mexico. No one celebrated my journey like the Mexicans. One day, a thousand horsemen and women uh, saddled their horses and rode with me. And um, I have very fond memories of, of Mexico. Um, Patagonia was uh, life altering. You know, I met my uh, fiance there, asked for help at her house and, uh, and ended up falling in love with her. Uh, the Yukon uh, was a place that um, kind of got under my skin because it was so hard to cross. The bears, the, the bugs, the mounds, the bog, but um, at the same time, it, like I fell in love with it. Like as hard as it was, it was so beautiful, so rugged. 
uh, so wild. And then all the indigenous communities I got to cross in the Yukon as well, and, and to learn their their story and, and the story of the Americas, right? We tend to forget that everyone came through a land bridge from Siberia to Alaska and ended up, you know, wandering down on their epic journeys uh, all the way to the southern part of, of Argentina and, and colonizing this, this continent before the Europeans arrived. But yeah, you know, there was so many special moments of this journey. And uh, yeah, people get to see it in the movie now like you saw it. So that's awesome. Yes, yes and it's the to be you know on horseback to see the world like you know it's such a you know what what a a great way you know and any regrets though um uh you know I don't really believe in regrets I think we all do something for a reason regardless of what the outcome I think that it's already written and we're just going through the motions you know it feels like nothing less than my destiny to have gone on this journey so um you know, as hard as it was, and I, like I said, I have scars that I carry with me. Some things that, you know, I take with me from the journey were good and some were bad. Uh, but I wouldn't take it back because it's made me who I am today. And and I was supposed to go on this journey. This was my uh, this was my purpose in life. It was my path. And I was just following my instincts. Yes. And what is next for you? So right now we are uh, traveling the world with a documentary, which is awesome. Been to film festivals and from Hollywood to India, uh, we won four awards already. So the documentary is, is doing really well on the international film festival circuit. We'll continue that till the end of the year. Um, I'm in Calgary right now. I, I work with the Calgary Stampede. I'll be uh, uh, riding in the parade. I was the um, parade marshal in 2020 when I finished my last journey. And this year I'll be the honorary marshal along with uh, Kevin Costner, which is going to be awesome. I work on the broadcast team uh, with the tie down roping. We broadcast uh, Sportsnet in Canada, uh, Cowboy Channel in the US, and then in Brazil, uh, Brasil Rural TV. So that's going to be really cool as well. And I just finished writing my third book, uh, Last Long Ride, which will be coming out uh, pretty soon here on the last uh, part of the journey. And we're working on a feature film uh, based on the first book, Long Ride Home, uh, about my first journey from Canada to Brazil. So we'll probably start shooting that next year. It'll be with actors and actresses, and uh, we'll retell the story uh, of the first ride through that narrative version. So super excited for that. That's wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, No, that's about it. Uh, Thanks for having me on. This is great. And uh, I just hope that uh, people get to watch the film. We are, uh, um, you know, we're screening across Canada as of July 8th, uh, Cineplex coast to coast from Vancouver to Halifax. And uh, so please search up the Long Rider film on Cineplex and you'll, you can find the closest location to you. It's a, it's a very, I think, inspirational movie that kind of shakes people up and uh, gets them to think about their own dreams and purposes and journey. Yes. And, and kind of people over the edge to, to take that first step. And yeah, so I hope you, you get a chance to watch it. Yeah. So, you know, I just on that, you know, it's um, dreams. You, you fulfilled your dream. And, yeah. you know, I want to ask, you know, for people who would like to become a long rider, how would, what tips would you give to them? So the first thing would be to uh, go into the Long Riders Guild website. You know, they have so much information on there. Like if you want to start riding, what kind of equipment uh, to use, how to train your horses. And, and you can find all kinds of epic long riders out there that have written several books. You know, uh, Aim Chifley, his book was like a Bible to me. I learned so much from it. So. I would obviously advise uh, the person to to build their know-how and, and read different books, uh, whether it's mine or anybody else's, because you'll be able to learn so many tricks of the trade uh, through those pages. And then just, you know, plan your trip, plan accordingly. Uh, strategic planning is extremely important. Uh, find out, you know, where you want to go to, what kind of terrain you're going to be crossing, you know, what kind of horses you should take, what kind of equipment, and then just get out there and do it because it's honestly uh, I think, um, in my humble opinion, the best way to see the world, you, you're you more elevated than any kind of uh, traveling machine, whether it's a motorcycle or a car. So you're able to see uh, way better around you. There's no engine, no noise. So you hear everything and travel so slowly that you see every pebble on the road. You learn about, you know, all the countries you cross, their culture. You eat with the people because you require so much help with those animals. So you have to enter their homes. And uh, ultimately, like we talked about at the beginning, the bond that you create with those horses is life changing. So get out there and do it because it's awesome. Thank you so much for your time and congratulations. And I love to do another interview with you, you know, and maybe in six months or, you know. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That would be awesome. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Bye for now.
Bye. Thank you.